Instrument 2-1 en route operations. Let's delve into the en route phase of our flight, the segment from the end of departure procedures to the start of arrival procedures. This part of the journey follows specific flight standards outlined in 14 Code of Federal Regulations, Federal Aviation Administration Order 8260.3, and other related publications. In en route navigation, we're witnessing a shift from traditional ground-based navigational aid airways to a more advanced satellite and computer-based system. Thanks to the Global Navigation Satellite System, we now have satellite-based positioning, navigation, and timing services in the United States, enhancing performance for all phases of flight, including en route navigation. According to 14 Code of Federal Regulations Part 91, Section 91.181, the course to be flown is crucial. Unless air traffic control authorizes otherwise, pilots must stick to the centerline on federal airways or, on other routes, follow the direct course between navigational aids or fixes that define the route. Maneuvering is allowed to avoid other air traffic or, in visual meteorological conditions, to clear the flight path during climb or descent. Airways. Airway routing occurs along predefined pathways called airways. In most land areas of the world, aircraft are required to fly airways between the departure and destination airports. The rules governing airway routing, standard instrument departures and standard terminal arrival, are published flight procedures that cover altitude, airspeed, and requirements for entering and leaving the airway. Most airways are 8 nautical miles, 14 kilometers, wide, and the airway flight levels keep aircraft separated by at least 500 vertical feet from aircraft on the flight level above and below when operating under visual flight rules. When operating under instrument flight rules, between the surface and an altitude of flight level 290, no aircraft should come closer vertically than 1,000 feet. Above flight level 290, no aircraft should come closer than 2,000 feet except in airspace where reduced vertical separation minima can be applied in which case the vertical separation is reduced to 1,000 feet. Airways usually intersect at navigational aids that designate the allowed points for changing from one airway to another. Airways have names consisting of one or more letters followed by one or more digits. Airways depicted on an aeronautical chart. The en route airspace structure of the national airspace system consists of three strata. The first stratum low altitude airways in the United States can be navigated using navigational aids, have names that start with the letter V, and are called Victor Airways. They cover altitudes from approximately 1,200 feet above ground level up to, but not including 18,000 feet above mean sea level. The second stratum high altitude airways in the United States all have names that start with the letter J, and are called jet routes. These routes run from 18,000 feet to 45,000 feet. The third stratum allows random operations above flight level 450. The altitude separating the low and high airway structure varies from county to country. For example, in Switzerland it is 19,500 feet and 25,000 feet in Egypt. Air Route Traffic Control Centers The Federal Aviation Administration defines an air route traffic control center as a facility established to provide air traffic control service to aircraft operating on IFR flight plans within controlled airspace, principally during the en route phase of flight. When equipment capabilities and controller workload permit, certain advisory or assistance services may be provided to visual flight rules aircraft. Air route traffic control centers, usually referred to as centers, are established primarily to provide air traffic service to aircraft operating on instrument flight rules flight plans within the controlled airspace, and principally during the en route phase of flight. There are 21 Air Route Traffic Control Center S in the United States Any aircraft operating under instrument flight rules within the confines of an Air Route Traffic Control Center's airspace is controlled by air traffic controllers at the center. This includes all sorts of different types of aircraft, privately owned single-engine aircraft, commuter airlines, military jets, and commercial airlines. The largest component of the national airspace system is the Air Route Traffic Control Centers. Each air route traffic control centers covers thousands of square miles encompassing all or part of several states. Air route traffic control centers are built to ensure safe and expeditious air travel. All centers operate 7 days a week, 24 hours a day, and employ a combination of several hundred air traffic control specialists, electronic technicians, computer system specialists, environmental support specialists, and administrative staff. Here figure is an example of the Boston Air Route Traffic Control Centers. The green lines mark the boundaries of the Boston Center area, and the red lines mark the boundaries of military operations areas, prohibited, restricted, alert, and warning areas. 
Safe Separation Standards The primary means of controlling aircraft is accomplished by using highly sophisticated computerized radar systems. In addition, the controller maintains two-way radio communication with aircraft in his or her sector. In this way, the specialist ensures that the aircraft are separated by the following criteria. Laterally, 5 miles. Vertically, 1,000 feet. If the aircraft is below flight level 290, or between flight level 290 and flight level 410 for reduced vertical separation minimum compliant aircraft. 2,000 feet if the aircraft is at flight level 290 or above. The controllers can accomplish this separation by issuing instructions to the pilots of the aircraft involved. Altitude assignments, speed adjustments, and radar vectors are examples of instructions that might be issued to aircraft. En route control is handled by pinpointing aircraft positions through the use of flight progress strips. These strips are pieces of printed paper containing pertinent information extracted from the pilot's flight plan. These strips are printed 20 minutes prior to an aircraft reaching each center's sector. A flight progress strip tells the controller everything needed to direct that aircraft. If the flight progress strips of each aircraft approaching a sector are arranged properly, it is possible to determine potential conflicts long before the aircraft are even visible on the center controller's display. In areas where radar coverage is not available, this is the sole means of separating aircraft. The strips, one for each en route point from which the pilot reports his or her position, are posted on a slotted board in front of the air traffic controller. At a glance, he or she is able to see certain vital data, the type of aircraft and who is flying it, airline, business, private, or military pilot, aircraft registration number or flight number, route, speed, altitude, airway designation, and the estimated time of arrival at destination. As the pilot calls in the aircraft's position and time at a predetermined location, the strips are removed from their slots and filed. Any change from the original flight plan is noted on the strips as the flight continues. Thus, from a quick study of the flight progress board, a controller can assess the overall traffic situation and can avoid possible conflicts. Flight Progress Strips The Fort Worth of Texas Air Route Traffic Control Center in the geographical area that it covers. The center has approximately 350 controllers. Most are certified and some are in on the job training. Now look into the world of airspace and sectors, the organizational backbone of air traffic control. The airspace managed by a center is often divided into smaller sectors, each with its controllers and unique radio frequencies for communication. As aircraft move between sectors, they switch frequencies accordingly, maintaining seamless coordination. At Fort Worth Texas Air Route Traffic Control Center, the airspace is subdivided into various sectors, each serving different altitudes. There are low-altitude sectors, intermediate-altitude sectors, high-altitude sectors, and an ultra-high-altitude sector. The number of controllers per sector depends on the air traffic volume. Controllers wield sophisticated tools, including computer software programs, aiding in safe separation. For instance, they can project an aircraft's route on the radar screen, helping anticipate potential conflicts. These decision support tools empower controllers to manage traffic efficiently. Now, Let's talk in flight requirements. Pilots under instrument flight rules in controlled airspace must continuously monitor an appropriate center frequency. As a flight transitions from departure to en route, there's often a handoff between control facilities. The Federal Aviation Administration publishes en route charts with center and sector frequencies, facilitating smooth handoffs. During handoffs, controllers assign new frequencies, ensuring continuous communication. As flights move through centers, the responsibility for safety remains with the pilot. Even when following radar vectors, pilots must maintain a safe altitude and position. Enhanced systems like Enhanced Ground Proximity Warning System, Terrain Awareness and Warning System, or Traffic Alert and Collision Avoidance System aid in detecting and correcting potential unsafe situations. Regardless of equipment, maintaining situational awareness is a fundamental pilot responsibility. Let's explore high-altitude area navigation routing. This program offers high-altitude routes with user-preferred options. Pilots can fly non-restrictive routes between specific fixes, known as pitch and catch points, within the high-altitude redesign Phase 1 expansion airspace. This expansion covers multiple air route traffic control center and encourages efficient routing for flights above flight level 350. Additionally, Area navigation routes with designators like Q501 play a role in the systematic flow of air traffic. 
These routes, beginning with Q, are published as preferred instrument flight rules routes, contributing to the orderly management of air traffic. Pilots are encouraged to plan around special use airspace and air traffic control assigned airspace schedules to avoid unplanned reroutes. Understanding airspace, sectors, and the tools available is crucial for both controllers and pilots, ensuring the safe and efficient flow of air traffic through our skies. In this realm of preferred instrument flight rules routes, a pivotal factor in boosting system efficiency and capacity, particularly between bustling airports. These routes, meticulously established, strive to balance traffic flows among high-density terminals and span one or more air route traffic control centers. Preferred instrument flight rules routes serve as the foundation for instrument flight rules clearances, facilitating efficient traffic management. They are outlined in the chart supplement and accessible on www.fly.fa.gov. Pilots can input departure and destination details, route type, area, aircraft types, altitude, route string, direction, departure air route traffic control centers, and arrival air route traffic control center for comprehensive information. These routes are correlated with departure procedures and standard terminal arrival routes, utilizing airways, jet routes, direct routes between navigational aids, waypoints, navigational aids radials or distance measuring equipment, or combinations thereof. In the certification specifications, you'll find preferred instrument flight rules routes for both low and high altitude strata. Understanding these routes is crucial. If a route begins or ends with an airway number, it suggests flights are usually cleared directly on the airway. If it starts or ends with a fix, pilots may be routed to or from these fixes via standard instrument departure routes, radar vectors, or stars. Major terminals have routes listed alphabetically under the departure airport, categorized for metropolitan areas when multiple airports are in proximity. Numerical listings show segment fixes, direction, and times effective. Routes with equal priority are listed where multiple routes exist. The route description includes official identifiers for very high-frequency omnidirectional ranges and very high-frequency omnidirectional radio or tactical air navigation, and intersection names are spelled out. Direct routing follows when navigational aids, intersections, and navigational aids radials or distance points are navigable in succession. The purpose of this system is to assist pilots, flight crews, and dispatchers in planning efficient routes, minimizing changes, and ensuring the orderly management of air traffic using federal airways. Cooperation in filing preferred routes contributes to fewer delays and improved efficiency throughout departure, en route, and arrival air traffic services. It's a collaborative effort to keep our skies organized and traffic flowing smoothly. If you click, like, and, subscribe, and leave a comment, we will provide a coupon for a free PDF download one of nine ebooks. However, each individual can only download up to one out of nine ebooks for free.